everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Irene and today I'm going to show you how I made garden table out of an old stool. To make it, I spent about $40 and 14 hours of work. Did it worth it? You tell me. So, today's story began when I decided to make a cozy garden nook, but I had no table for it. I examined our barn and there I found a very old stool. It's quite high, it's kind of a bar stool, so it will do perfectly for the table base. I've decided to make a table top out of plywood and for this I've used a couple of plywood leftovers I had. The size is not enough to make the entire top, so I'll make the top out of two parts. I'm placing two pieces of plywood side by side, placing the stool on top and marking where it will sit with a pencil. Then I'm marking the center of the resulting square. I'm making a simple compass. I'm tying a thread to a pencil, the other end of the thread to a push pin, and then I'm sticking the push pin into the center of the square and drawing a circle. I'm going to make the tabletop of about 30 inches in diameter. Since the top will be made of two parts, I need to connect them securely. In order to do this, I'm going to attach a plank on the inside. I'm marking where to cut the plank. I need its edges to be about an inch shorter than the tabletop itself, so that this plank is not visible when looking at the table. I'm going to be making two connecting planks for both sides of the table. I'm cutting the plank pieces and sanding them a little to make the edges nice and smooth. Then I'm drilling holes in the resulting parts. After that, I'm placing the plywood pieces on a large table, placing the stool on top where it's going to be, and I'm placing the plank parts close to the stool. After that, I've fastened them to the plywood, or rather, I've tried to do it. The plywood is very dense, so I've had to ask for help, and my husband is helping me with it. After I have the two pieces of plywood connected securely, I'm drawing a circle again, more precisely. Now I can cut out the tabletop base. I'm cutting it out using a jigsaw, trying to make the most accurate and even circle. And in the end, I'm also sanding the edge. Next, I'm going to work with the stool. First, I'll give it a good sand. I had the idea to strip the paint down to the wood and stain it to make the wood texture visible, but I abandoned this idea quickly. There are lots of damaged areas on the stool legs and the surface is very uneven in places, there are dents filled with paint, so it would be too hard a job to clean all the paint out of there. So I've decided I'll just paint it and therefore I'm trying to make the surface smoother and remove any old paint streaks and the like. After everything is ready, I'm dusting off the stool, dusting off myself, and now I'll assemble the table. I'm placing the stool between the connecting planks on the tabletop and attaching the seat to the tabletop. Next, I'm going to paint the legs. First, I'm priming the stool and the underside of the top. I'm using bonding primer, which I have on hand. This one is for chalk paint, actually, but works for wood as well. Just hope it will hold up well outside. The primer dries very quickly and soon I'm beginning to paint. I'm using a semi-matte acrylic enamel for outdoors. We'll see how it shows itself with time. This is local brand and is very cheap. I've given the stool two layers of paint to get a dense and even coating. I don't know if the paint will last well, but for now I really like it. The finish is rather matte, which is great, and the coverage is good as well. Since the paint is water-based, there's no smell, which is also a definite plus. I 
I'm waiting until everything is dry and then I'm going to make a mosaic top. I've dreamed of making a mosaic table for quite some time. And our local hardware store has very beautiful mosaic tiles made of natural stone, so I've decided to use them for this table. First I'm using tiny squares of travertine to cover the tabletop edges. They are of perfect size for this purpose. I'm cutting a sheet of mosaic into strips and attaching them to the edge of the table. The extremely pleasing thing here is it has fit just perfectly. I'm lucky. I haven't even adjusted the seams between the squares here. I'm using tight bone heavy duty construction adhesive here, it sets very quickly, provides an elastic connection and given that the base is of plywood and depending on the humidity it can change its size a little, I think it's really important. It's also water resistant, which is good for outdoors. After the adhesive has set, I'm turning the table back up and beginning to work with the table surface. First, I'm attaching the stone squares along the edge in a circle. Here I cannot use strips from tiles anymore, so I'm cutting the mesh and dividing the mosaic tile into separate squares. I'm placing the squares of the first row along the very edge right onto the squares that have been attached vertically but with a half shift, so that each horizontal square sits on the seam between the two vertical ones. At first I've just laid out all the squares in the right place and then I'm attaching them using the construction adhesive. I'm squeezing a drop of the adhesive into each square and pressing it tightly to the surface. You can still move the square for a while so that you can adjust the position of the mosaic if necessary. When I was about to make the second row, the rain started, so I'll continue working in a gazebo. I'm laying out the second row of squares in the same way, trying to keep the same distance between the squares and here I have to adjust the distance a little already, so that there are no major gaps anywhere. The edging part of the table is now ready and I'm going to fill the center part. To make it, I've bought a stone mosaic tile too, but this one has free form pebbles on it. I've also started cutting the mosaic with scissors, but then I've realized that it's easier to tear off the pebbles, and so I'm tearing all of the pebbles off the mesh they were sitting on. After that, I'm kind of putting together a puzzle out of pebbles to cover the entire surface without major gaps. Of course, mosaic is not the most budget-friendly option, but I really like it very much. You can also make a combo of white ceramic squares along the edge and white ceramic circles or hexagons in the middle, thus you'll get a more sleek and modern look. If you want a cheaper option, you can use broken tiles or a pebble mosaic and assemble a very beautiful tabletop with an interesting part. Here the problem is that you'll have to use pebbles of about the same thickness, so gathering the material for it can take quite a while, but the result will definitely please you. This is in fact quite entertaining work, so Gary and I had fun doing it together until we ran out of pebbles. Unfortunately, three sheets I had bought were not enough for the entire table, and we'll have to buy one more sheet to finish it. As I've said, I didn't have enough stones for the center of the table, so for now I'm going to be attaching the pebbles that had already been laid by the time we ran out of pebbles. The most important thing here is not to miss any pebble when attaching them, so we need to check the pebbles all the time. If you try to move it, it becomes clear whether the stone is attached or not.
The next day came and we've bought another sheet of mosaic for the middle part and I'm finishing laying out the mosaic on the top. The very middle is in fact the most complicated part. Here we've rearranged the pebbles back and forth for a very long time, trying to fill the surface as tightly as possible. Anticipating the question of why I didn't leave the stones on the mesh and attach the tiles as they are, there were very large gaps between the stones on the tiles, I didn't want such wide seams. And also it's not so easy to insert a square in a circle, since we have square tiles and a round table. Next I'm going to finish the seams. As for the grout, I've doubted whether to use cement or epoxy grout. Epoxy grout is much more expensive and is also said to be much more complicated to apply. I've read that even experienced craftsmen do not undertake to work with it and I have no experience working with grout at all. But in the end I've nevertheless decided on epoxy grout, because it provides more durable and elastic seams, which is extremely important for outdoors. I've bought the cheapest epoxy grout my local hardware store had in a small container. Since the working life of this grout is 60 minutes and I didn't know how much time I'll spend to finish the seams, I've decided to mix it in small portions, since the proportion ratio is written in the instructions. I watched several videos on YouTube on how to apply epoxy grout properly and they said you should apply it only into the seams and try not to get on the rest surface of the tile. I've tried really hard to do this, but quickly changed the tactics. This advice is probably good for bigger tiles, but for mosaic tiles where there are so many seams, it is just impossible to apply the grout locally and not get on the rest of the surface. Besides, this grout gives a wet stone effect, that is, stones become a bit darker and brighter after it, so if you have a part of the surface covered with the grout and the other part without it, it will look ugly. So in the end I've decided to cover the entire surface with the grout. So, just like when working with ordinary cement grout, I'm applying it boldly, then removing the excess with a plastic spatula. The only difference is that immediately after application, I'm rubbing the surface with a dry sponge in order to remove any sand particles of the mosaic. It gets very clean at this stage already. 20 minutes later, I'm rubbing the surface again with a damp sponge to remove any residue of sand. In general, I can say that this ground was not so difficult to work with as I was afraid in the beginning. As we say in Russia, Faye has many eyes. After all the seams are ready, I let the table sit for a while. Then I'm finally wiping the table with a damp cloth once again and leaving it for several hours so that the grout sets. And we're done! I'm so happy my dream of having a mosaic table came true. By the way, it doesn't have to be a garden table. It will look great on a balcony or a terrace or even in a living room. But I'm going to use it for a charming garden nook, which I'll show you in my next video. So stay tuned to see how I've arranged this table in my garden.
So I hope you liked today's project. Please let me know what you think of it down below. Did it worth it after all? Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!